Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about Terramaster NAS and I want to talk about how to assign a hot spare to your Terramaster NAS storage. Now for those that aren't aware I have talked about hot spares before I'm going to make my way through most of the NAS brands out there and tell you guys exactly how to do this but Today, the reason I'm talking about Terramaster NAS is a number of you purchased one of the last two or three years worth of generation of Terramaster NAS, and what you've found is your storage is starting to reach its limits, and you want to introduce bigger and better hard drives, and some of you that use them for business needs, for backing up your client data, your customer data, or backing up lots of CCTV footage, security stuff mostly, you have found that you're becoming overly reliant on the data inside your device. And if we make our way into the control panel here, as you can see, there's loads of options with regards to storage. You can expand your storage with external, um, external drives via USB. You can add hard drives. You can modify the storage pool. You've got loads of options open to you. In fact, on this device, I've got three 4TB drives inside. Currently, two of those drives are in a RAID 1. Um, I've been performing some retests here for another video coming up very, very soon. Now, if you were running a Terramaster NAS with, say, a RAID 1 or even a RAID 5, chances are, if that data is mission critical, you have thought about the subject of hot spares. Hot spares are when you've got a hard drive or SSD installed inside your NAS or DAS system that is to be used if your RAID volume collapses, that is to say that if one of the multiple drives that are inside your RAID configuration acting as a safety net for your data, if one of those drives um, has a malfunction or falls or a drive is just accidentally disconnected for any reason or any of those or more, chances are you need to know that your data is not only safe but still as accessible as fast as possible. And that's where hot spares come in. It's when the system has a drive inside uh, the NAS that it will automatically pull into the RAID if one of the drives fails. Now, this isn't a new concept. Hot spares have existed for a very long time, but it's only in the last four or five years that we've seen the concept of hot spare drives entering into a more commercial and home user NAS in and DAS environment. Adding a hot spare is very, very easy. And adding a, a hot spare to a Terramaster NAS storage environment is even easier still. To do it, so you don't have to do it with your own drives and see this whole guide through, first you've got to make sure you've got the same size drive in your hot spare as you have in your storage pool. So in my case, I've got two 4TB drives inside a RAID 1 environment. Yes, they are different brands. I didn't have lots of spare drives. I've got most of them tied up in different user environments right now. So you're going to have to forgive me for having mixed drives. Never do this. I do not recommend you do that. But this is just for convenience in this video. But as you can see, a couple of 4TB drives are there. If we go to the hard drive tab here, we can see that I've got those two drives and I've got a third drive right here that's ready and not being utilized in that RAID environment. It's just sitting there spare. I've just added to the device that the TerraMaster is just bench checking in the background for utilization. To turn one of these drives into the hot spare, head to the option below where obviously it says hot spare. From here, click create. And from there, it will list the available drives on the Terramaster NAS system that have not been allocated to any kind of storage pool or initialized. There is our 4TB drive in Bay 5. Click the tick button and then click next. Then assign it to any available RAID volumes. Now I'm utilizing a 5 bay NAS, but of course there are larger 8, 12 and 16 huge rack mount storage solutions where you may have different RAID volumes all within the same um, NAS system. In this case, I've only got the one, so it's very hard to get things mixed up. So then I click the tick next to RAID 1. Then I click apply. And you can see it will completely format and delete any data on this spare drive. That should be absolutely fine, but do double check that there isn't any crucial data on that disk before you inst uh, install it inside a Terramaster NAS as a hot spare. Clicking confirm. From here, this drive is now being allocated as a hot spare. You can edit it and add other drives or even change which RAID configuration you want the hot spare to be assigned to. In the event that one of the drives inside this storage pool that I've created here with the other two 4TBs was to collapse, it will automatically switch onto that hot spare. 
and it's as straightforward as that. There are other ways in which you can institute other disks, whether you, whether you want to utilize iSCSI to make lo um, network drives appear localized, but these aren't really applicable in the case of a hotspot because a hotspot needs to be local and at the same connection and latency as other connected drives within the storage pool. And that's about it. Thanks a lot for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't get me wrong, I'm sure a lot of you already know the concept of hotspots and indeed about the concept of Terramaster NAS's storage system. But it's always great to see these things enacted without utilizing your data. If you've enjoyed it, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And I'll see you next time.